I'm Farmer Brad and on today's video I'm really excited to share that I got some hatching eggs quail. They're uh, Caternix quail so they're really geared towards meat. I've raised pasture poultry the last, uh, I, I took two years off and then I, I raised them three years prior. The difficulty with pasture poultry is that you can't raise any meat during the winter time. Living in East Central Indiana we get uh, the white stuff called snow and uh, you need grass in order to raise pasture poultry. Well, quail, they have a lot of uh, benefits by raising them um, and I like the idea of being able to raise some meat during the winter time on our farm. Uh, now they don't give you a lot of meat um, but they end up making uh, individual s serving uh, for your plate. I also wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by AJ Farms. AJ Farms is a um, hatching egg uh, supplier in Virginia and you can go to ajfarmsllc.com to check out more information. I was out in the Homesteaders America conference this last weekend and uh, they let me stay with them and uh, just learned a lot of information about quail and they sent me home with uh, two dozen quail eggs. Now they sent them in the, uh, this package like that and I headed home on Sunday if you're traveling that you let the eggs settle for 24 hours because there could be with the moving in the vehicle there could be some air bubbles that need to settle and if uh, there's some air bubbles in the way then it could uh, not have a successful hatch. With, um, with Caternix quail on average they hatch on 17 days um, it could go up to 20, it could be 16 days, um, but 17 days is the average for, for this uh, variety of uh, quail. The eggs, if you're into raising quail for the eggs, <coughs> quail eggs contain 13% protein compared to 11% in chicken eggs and 140% of vitamin B1 compared to 50% in chicken eggs and five times as much iron and potassium and two times as much vitamin A and B12. Quail eggs are richer in phosphorus and calcium and quail eggs have a high HDL uh, cholesterol content so they have the good fat. And the taste, um, I've had some quail eggs and I feel like it is richer, creamier, almost like it naturally has butter added to them anyways. A lot of times people with diabetes will search out for quail eggs um, to be able to, um, their, their health can be healthier than uh, chicken eggs, uh, but it will take a lot more to have uh, omelets in the morning and stuff. So um, yeah, so the plan with these quail are that I'm going to incubate them and hatch them out and then I'm going to build a um, cage in one of the rooms of my barn and then I'll, um, the other benefit too is at eight weeks they start laying eggs so um, so they're in the incubator for 17 days they hatch out then two months before they start laying eggs um, but that's still pretty quick so we're in October November, December. So by January, I'm hoping that I can start collecting eggs um, probably like middle of January, um, start collecting eggs to be able to put in the incubator. So I'm going to first build up my breeding stock flock and then uh, you don't want to have too many males um, from the research that I've done and so the males, I'll keep the male uh, count down and that will try to keep peace in the cages uh, but I'm gonna try to build a cage so that the eggs will roll out and then um, I'll do a closed loop uh, bucket water system um, I'm gonna try to do the horizontal water nipples so I can do a closed loop system have the bucket gravity feed uh, down and then um, have a pump pump it back up into the bucket and uh, and such 
or actually I'll go from the bucket, have it pump up through the pipe and then work its way back into the bucket and then have a heated element in the bucket. Um, so just a little reminder about uh, incubation. Um, this is the 502 uh, Sportsman. It's uh, digitally uh, thermostat equipped. Um, it runs on 110 power and uh, it has three trays or three levels in here and then on the bottom is the hatching tray and that's where you put your eggs when on lockdown so with these quail eggs on day 14 I'll put them down there um, so that they uh, can can start start hatching when they're ready but that uh, they're settled now the, each row has a timer and it, tra it uh, um, slants which helps rotate the eggs now let me show you um, what I do on my charts here. So along the top I have uh, the tray, the quantity, the start date for when the eggs were first gathered, um, when they go in the incubator, uh, when I need to pull them out for the hatching tray, uh, the number of days uh, for them to have a full hatch, and then the date of when those 17 days will happen and then I'll have a hatch like the number that hatch now so these eggs were hatched out or um, were laid on Sunday the 10th and so I'm putting them in the incubator on the 13th but uh, this this date is important um, I know with chicken eggs <laughs> I try to aim for 8 to 10 days of gathering the eggs and I really don't like to go much beyond that because the fertility of the eggs go down. Um, so that's where this date um, would come, would be uh, important. And then on the 27th is when I'll take the eggs and put them down on the bottom. Uh, so I've put these eggs on an egg tray. Now these are pheasant uh, trays and what I've done is I've put a letter A on the front and since these trays can double stack I went ahead on the other trays and put B, uh, B, C, and D. So that's where this tray number comes into play. I have um, row one, two, and three in here. And then this is tray A, so this is A, and I'm going to put it on uh, the shelf one. So this is a way that I kind of just keep organized um, to try, like if I have multiple uh, trays hatching and staggered, and sometimes I've had them, uh, the dates staggered uh, just on the same, same row. So this kind of helps me keep track of that. And then, um, yeah, so the quantity is the number of eggs that I start. Hatched are the number of eggs that are alive. And then uh, another num good number to look for is when you candle the eggs, how many of those eggs had nothing in there. Uh, that way you can calculate your hatch rate versus your fertility rate. The other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, this has been heating up um, some days prior so you want to warm up your incubator uh, ahead of time so there's a button on the side called manual I press press and hold that and that will level the shelf out and I take this tray slide it in there and I tilt it to one side make sure that the eggs are not going to fall now up here is a water reservoir this helps uh, regulate the humidity. Um, when it comes locked down, 
So typically you want it to be uh, like 55% uh, humidity, uh, but on, when you go to lockdown, <coughs> there's a spot in there where you can add this, and what increases or decreases humidity is actually the surface area. Um, so this adds surface area to that water that's there, and it will increase uh, the humidity to 65% ballpark. And I went ahead and added a float valve here. I have it come out, and then I'm able to fill up this large bucket. I'm able to fill up this large bucket, so I'm not pulling this tray out all the time. And you also don't want a whole bunch of uh, temperature changes when it comes to the eggs. So I'm shutting this here, and... So I hope this little video was helpful. Uh, I'm really excited to get started in uh, quail. Uh, it's been a, uh, actually in 2019 when I first met uh, John and Anita who run AJ Farms, I got really, um, the, the wheels started turning in my head of how, could use, how I could use quail on our farm uh, to uh, create meat. And uh, recently, so the lamb, uh, had some uh, video talking about quail or some posts and uh, so a lot of people are getting into quail um, and with um, food scarcity and such um, it's uh, it's you can never be too prepared it's always to be better prepared than underprepared um, so Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and also check out AJFarmsLLC.com. They are an MPIP AI clean uh, hatching uh, farm and uh, they're very knowledgeable with um, quail and then they also have been raising uh, some meat rabbits and chickens, meat birds and uh, they're doing a lot of cool things over there. And you can check out their YouTube channel, Homestead Evolution on YouTube and uh, you'll see uh, they have a lot of informational videos um, just a lot of knowledge to uh, soak up so make sure to check that out and uh, next time I see you uh, will hopefully be in 17 days uh, just before Halloween and I'll uh, they should be hatching out so thanks and uh, have a wonderful day